this is character. Pat Riot with Relevant, and my guests are the illustrious Serpents of Secrecy. We have Todd Ingram, guitarist. We have Mark, the vocalist. Reverend Jim Horse on bass, and Chuck Ducart, the third drums. Yes, and indeed. we're missing Steve Fisher, but he cut out early, so we have four fifths of the Serpents with us. I don't know if we're missing Steve Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> we might be intentionally missing Steve. <laughs> He's, He's actually just, still out there. We just said how we doing <laughs> Just neglected to inform. Get that sour note. Uh, and I, I'm going to dive in. Re Jim recently asked me about something that I had commented in a piece I wrote about some naysayers and stuff. And there, the reason that I made such a comment, there was a lot of talk over time that was Serpents of Secrecy on? Was it a legitimate band? Was it going to happen? Was it just a project? So, from the Serpents' mouths themselves. Uh, this is a legitimate project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not just a, a, a one-off or anything like that. We're a, we're a true band. Mm -hmm. it took us a while to get here. Uh, there's definitely been some members in and out the door over the last four years. But uh, we finally got a solidified lineup and we're on our way. Pretty much got to do that. I agree. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you take the long road as the scenic route, you know, and you still find your destination. Is the, you know, the most, you know, we didn't take the quickest, most direct route, but we're here. Well, I believe that. I mean, things are official. I mean, you have signed with Salt of the Earth Records. We have singles out at this time. And uh, so, as that goes, what is the next step as far as with Solid Earth, uh, full length, the EP? Uh... Yep, we've got a, uh, a full length <coughs> in progress. We're going to do some uh, final touches on the mixing and mastering of the, the remaining tracks for the album. And then uh, some final tweaks on the artwork and packaging and so forth like that. But yeah, we're, we're full steam ahead on a full length release. Okay. The tracks that I've heard, of course, live tonight. We are at Maryland Noon Fest, by the way. Uh, live tonight were killer. Of course, I heard a couple tracks online and stuff. It's really good. And as I said to you, I think it has soul. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. Most I think so, people, too. I, I do. I think there's a soulful element. Yeah. So, along with everything else there. Uh, how did the Salt of the Earth record deal come about? You all? That, that's, it's a, that's a... No, everything with this band is a long story, but we have been working at it for four years. Um, I know, obviously, for the basis of this, I just went through a, a pretty serious illness. I didn't even know if I was going to make it for this show this evening, but uh, I, I I had another illness back in 2012. And right about that time, I got to be friends with uh, Scott Harrington from Song the Air. At the time, he was just doing a 313 management. And, uh, was a huge 60 watt fan, was a fan of mine, of me personally, um, a fan of what Todd was doing with King Giant, um, a fan of Foghound, um, yep. the other band I'm in with Chuck. Not a fan of me. Not a fan of me. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually, you we had to talk about it. He's warming up to you. Uh, that's, but, uh, that's, we're working uh, our way. What's he heard of you? Basically, Scott kind of uh, got, well, me and Chuck were in uh, the old band that I'm not going to mention right now. Uh, so me and Chuck had a long history of playing together. Um, he kind of brought uh, Johnny Clark Ward from ATV, uh, Todd and myself, and Chuck, and, and uh, Aaron, who was one of the dead old breaks. And we were kind of trying to do a project. It wasn't a project then. And, uh, you know, there was a reunion for mine and Chuck's previous group. Uh, then Todd ended up coming on his guitar. And this whole idea of service was kind of put on hold as I dealt with my illness to the reunion and the reunion didn't work out for that other group so we went full tilt with with servants about two years ago about yep. that um and in that time period scott started his label put out the uh scissor plate record he just put out the cortez record old time moonshine working with a lot of good yeah. bands doing the earth ride record yeah, yeah he's doing the earth ride yeah, they're stepping up with some good bands. um and because me and me and Scott had a, a really good friendship and a relationship based from back then, not even a business relationship, just a, a really solid friendship. Um, I knew what the label was doing, and we sat and talked, and we basically went to him like, "Are you interested in putting this out?" 
because we've been sitting on the material so for so long that we didn't want to screw around with shopping or anything of that nature. We knew we could trust Scott. We, we saw how hard he was working with the bands on Salt, and it just made sense. It's kind it's of a a, the natural fit, yeah. and yeah. him stepping up and doing the label at the same time. I, you know, we're finally ready to, to get something else. Yeah. That, you know, we've been working on it's uh, just the, the timing was perfect. Now, as the final piece of the current lineup was was Mark the last on board or Steve? I am actually the second to last. Steve came yeah, in Steve one practice yeah, after me. Yes. I was. That's what I was. That's thinking. true. Yeah. Yeah. It was one practice later. They said we're going to get true. another guitarist. Mm -hmm. I and and Steve was pretty much hired before he was even hired. Yeah. Yeah. John yeah. said he was coming to jam, and I'm yeah. like, he's in the fucking band. <laughs> he's well, in the band. My other yeah. band had played with Baracho, so I was like, yeah. Yeah. You know, I was like hell yeah, that yeah. sounds awesome. Baracho uh, taking a hiatus because Mario is going to live in Peru, Peru, in Peru yeah, for <laughs> for the foreseeable future with his wife who has a job down there. To, and just knowing Steve for so long that we were kind of looking for that fifth element to the group. And as soon as I, I, I remember thinking, man, he's going to have a lot of time on his hands. I wonder if that guy wants to come and play with us. And it fit so perfectly. Oh, it's, 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 it's even. Even just when we're warming up uh, for rehearsals in the jam space, it's the writing is already happening for the next album. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, literally, all, we're already we have that's so quick. Yeah, so opening quick. every rehearsal with a, a new jam. It's kind of it was really amazing. I mean, Todd, uh, Chuck, and myself have been tight. Well, me and Chuck have been friends since I was this old. But you just have a tight friendship, tight relationship. Mark came right in and it felt like we'd always be together. And, yeah. and then Steve comes in and bang. It's not. It doesn't even seem like a band. It just seems like a bunch of a good friends, like a yeah. family. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and you talk about chemistry, it's been immediate and awesome. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's uncanny kind of fast. Like, cool, all right. Yeah. I'll leave a band practice after three hours and you're like, I, I love those guys. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, now in this day and age, a lot of musicians juggle multiple bands. Of course, you all um, still will be pursuing your yeah. day job uh, yeah. bands, I yeah. assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's the, you know, we're not going to go trying to. It's just another West Coast. Yeah, we're not going to Nobody's going to tear up the, the road in the van or whatever, but, you know, it's kind of, we, we fit it in and it's it'll take on a life of its own. But, you know, we're not, we're not trying to gig every weekend at the, you know, the local. You know, Guidos or whatever and down the street. We're, we're looking for good opportunities to, to put ourselves out there, yeah. you know, but, and, and not, not, not making random decisions yeah. that put us in peril for, yeah. for no no good reason. Yeah. You know? It's understandable. I mean, you can be selective about what yeah. plays nowadays. Well, we, we've all been doing this for a very long goddamn time. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's probably not smart. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no doubt. And speaking of the live shows, it was just what in the last few months that you all actually took to the stage the Back first in October. Time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And everything's been going good live. Every show has been. We're awesome. having a just, great time. Yeah. Seems to get a great reception. Building on everyone's so, building yeah. on the last, and, and I think tonight was definitely a, a, a celebration of sorts and a yeah. catharsis of yeah. sorts. You know, with all of the black clouds that have been hanging over recently. Yeah. It was, we didn't, it was in doubt whether we were going to be here up until a couple days ago. Yeah, yeah. we didn't know. know. Physically <laughs> able to do it. Well, I said the whole time I was playing. I uh, yeah, did. Yeah, I saw and, and we all, and we all, we all yeah. kept texting, like, it was, like, in his loop, we're like, yeah, and, like, those were like, Big, big nod, sure? nod. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, shit. that's why I saw a comment something to the effect board. that Jim's gonna be there. He has to play sitting down or something. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, like, whatever. Yeah, whatever it takes. I, I said, there's no way I was fucking. Sitting. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. If Jim wanted to play, we were gonna play. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. that was what we said. Yeah, yeah. we'll yeah, all yeah, sit ready down. to do it. We should have been here. Yeah, I'm sure glad it worked out. And it felt great. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That, that, that's the key. Is is every show that we have, it's just, it's just fucking fun. Yeah. yeah. And then we have a great chemistry on stage, and we just have a good time. And I think that translates to the crowd. That's something that yeah, I always yeah. enjoyed. You know, and I mean, we've all been in different kinds of music, and sometimes yeah. you're in something more aggro, so you go up with that like just just mm. kind of mean, violent, or whatever it is. And this one. I'm even, having a blast. even our aggro songs. I mean, we're yeah, laughing yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. We're, laugh, we're laughing while you, we slap you in the face. You know, it's just it's, it's a good time, and I think it instantly you kind of get that that feedback from the crowd. You see them smiling back at you. They they yeah. see that if you like each other genuinely, yeah. they're usually you know, translate. Yeah, yeah. I think it helps. You still gotta have decent riffs. 
songwriting process of uh, right. Serpents of Secrecy, how does that work? Does any, uh, somebody come in with a riff, or how well, does it? I, I guess, you know, for the first batch that's coming out, a lot of that was, was Jim and I and Chuck, but uh, as I mentioned before, uh, within the first couple of uh, sessions that we had with Steve in the band, it, we're already, we already have five or six rough skeletons of, of yeah. new material for the next record yeah, yeah. For the next there, there's so. never there's never a shortage of us coming up with ideas well, like me and Todd write all the time what? and so does Steve well, so. the first batch I mean you had a stockpile of riffs yeah. that weren't necessarily you know for fitting the other band and yeah. and and Jim and I were jamming independently mm -hmm. and we had like a couple of things and um, when we all got together we were like so. and then we would end up in Writing a new one that day. Yeah, you know, a lot way. of it. Came, I was uh, I was way out in the mountains, out past, past Morgantown, and when we started developing this idea, like Chuck said, Todd had things that weren't necessarily a fit for King Giant, right? Yeah. Group, but it just it didn't necessarily. I guess would fit be the word, or just it didn't. It didn't necessarily gel with what yeah. the direction of that group. I guess. Yeah. And I was just writing. Sitting I was just writing mm -hmm. and yeah. songs, riffs, putting stuff together. So yeah, once we got in the room, and Chuck is a master orchestrator. So when we bring all this stuff together, it just it, it, it wasn't him having half a song and me writing something to fit it. It was the opposite of that. Or I had a whole song, or he had a whole song, and we just make it work. Y'all yeah, don't seem to strike me as the type that would struggle to write a song. I mean, we all hear writer's no. block or whatnot. Uh, no. Our struggle is the fact that we have so much material. Yeah. <laughs> we, it, it's, it's getting the studio time, to get, get it all time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, schedule wise, and, and then and then getting the studio time to go in there and track it. Um, I'm pretty confident in saying that we've got at least three albums already. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we have stuff that we could have recorded for the upcoming album that yeah. we just shelved because we... We were up against the gun and we were yeah, completely yeah. just... We got, an album, we got an album's length on songs recorded and was like, we can keep the one or let's focus on this right yeah. now. So we decided uh, let's to focus finish on this that. one. But you guys also mm -hmm. have this situation of kind of shuffling the singers so much. Well, that was a, there yeah. was a spinal yeah. tap of uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. situation the with the lead singer. Because <laughs> yeah. I was supposed guys. to come in... Funny enough that we're here at Doomfest, if you recall, I was supposed to just come in to do Doomfest because the last previous year, singer, last, last year, year yeah. Yeah. because the previous yeah. singer was, Resigned. well, hadn't at the time, was kind of unavailable, <laughs> well, yeah. and then it progressed. And it was funny, I had, uh, and my other band had played with King Giant, my yep. band Zakaya had played with King Giant, so Todd happened to ask, knows the guitar player Josh from that, talk to Josh, Josh pings me, I go, sure. I think he sent me your numbers and I texted you while I was out of town working. Yeah. Never heard back. So I was like, ah, they found somebody who thought, nah, that guy sucks. And then it was, it, so was it was literally <laughs> just a miscommunication. Yep. I thought he wasn't interested. He he thought we'd find yep. somebody. Uh, Josh hit me up like a month and a half later. Yeah, he was like, are you ever going to hit up this guy, Todd? And yeah. I was like, dude, I did. I totally wrote to him and I said, hey, you guys found each other on the back pages. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> plenty, of, plenty of fish connections. Plenty of misconnections. <laughs> the misconnections so, on Craigslist. So, <laughs> it was pretty funny. He, he, you know, so then I, I, you know, I was like, oh, hell no, you know, I, I, I was real interested. So it was like, okay, we're going to do these five songs. And I hadn't heard anything that the previous singer, the way he had done it. Right, no, we've, we've been very uh, disciplined about that. I can understand. That, yeah, yeah, we didn't want that to influence yeah. the songwriting. Well, and, and, and what was weird nice. though was the original thing was I was like, let me hear his stuff so I can see if I because I was supposed yeah. to perform what he was going to do. So like, yeah, yeah. let me know because I was like, I'm totally on board, but let me hear his voice because maybe I'm nowhere near it right. or it's not gonna. I won't do it justice. I'll be honest if I don't think I'll sound right for it. And then I kind of got radio silence for a short time. Yeah. And I'm like, well, shit. I guess this dead this died again. I guess they found somebody Thanks else. And then it's like. So, 
would you want to just be in the band? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, were, were there lyrics in place when you came on? Or no. Just, no. So Mark, are you he the main lyrics? He had blank slates. He had the instrumentation, and that's it. So and we let him it run was, with the ball. It, it otherwise, was it wouldn't awesome. have been a collaboration, oh. and we want to stand behind this being like a true collaboration. Okay. Everyone has their their say and their piece of it. You know? We had names for the songs, working title, and then yeah. working as working titles and a theme. Of a lyrical uh, idea, and we and just they, they we kind of for fed you the, the seed, yep. and then they worked for some of them, and then he was able to like build off of that. So and, the yeah. cheat yeah. definitely is yeah. like a very specific. Jim was talking to me about the, the story behind that and the idea, and then I just got to, but like not a single word. It was just like that's the yeah. title. It's the name of a river. It also plays here's the concept. Thing. Here's yeah. kind of the concept. And it was really cool because I got to just sit there and imagine and figure out the way it hits and, and fits. Uh, well, instead, instead of coming in blind, blind, instead of coming in blind, there, there was like an outline of an idea. Yeah, for, right. Um, yeah. Which I haven't delved into the lyrics, but of course, the name of the band itself. Uh, I'm not sure. Like I said, I don't know the lyrical content. There's almost like a, almost an implication. I'm, of course, we're not going to touch on the political side of things, but almost of I get the implication of like a. Secret society, or a little bit That's, of a yeah, yeah. sort of thing. There was an idea of that, yeah. you know, a, a brotherhood. And we were all a brotherhood, and uh, we're veterans in the rock and roll world. And it was kind of a uh, how did the, did, did you oh, well, Johnny, you know, Johnny Throckmorton, when we originally first all got in the same room, uh, Johnny was. Uh, Vocalist at the mm. time, Johnny Throckmorton from Alabama Thunderbolt yeah. and the Medusa, and the Medusa, yes. and uh, he had that name kicking around. And over time, uh, when when he communicated to us that you know what, I can't, I can't. Time and distance, right? Time and distance. Yeah. Yeah. Richmond, we've ever seen Baltimore. Yeah. It was kind of not gonna work. I can't do this. And I asked him. I said, "Well, can we still use the name?" And he said, "Absolutely." So that it was, it was a great name. We just well, yeah. continued with and it, it fit into. The, I mean, the idea at the time too was you were going to keep everything really, really. What played into the secret society thing? Not we're all into our own uh, crazy spiritual uh, <laughs> ideas and things. Not belief systems and whatnot. Belief systems, <laughs> yeah. But it lends itself to esoteric yeah, symbolism. We're, we're yeah, Scientologists. Yeah. <laughs> we would like to no, study yeah. your the theme actually, levels. Yeah, would, actually your fit, would actually fit is that, is that we wanted to keep longer? everything really under under the radar yeah. right. and not really talk about it. Yeah. But then it kind of be a surprise when it came out. It just so happens it came out four fucking years later. <laughs> well, we yeah, keep, it was a surprise, all right. Yeah, we wanted to keep everything kind of like under the radar and just be able to come out swinging with not, not a lot of talk or, you yeah. know, Let the hoopla music behind the it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I think uh, we're also willing to have a little bit of fun with it, like yeah, versus yeah. you know versus like a band that you know we're not like ghosts. We're like ooh, or, or so dra scary. dragged <laughs> into the <laughs> and we have dragged into sunlight. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're you know I'm not gonna come up with uh, Papal Rose. If this band has anything, you know? it is a well developed sardonic sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Is there a producer in line for the Us. recording? Well, you know, well Jay Robbins. Uh, yeah. We've been working Absolutely. with him yeah. at uh, Magpie Cage Studio, and. Uh, yeah, he's, he's been great and a dream to work with, and the record sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and he's often said, you know what? Yeah. Hey, right here, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear a harmony. Or mm -hmm. I oh, hear, he, he'll, he, he's yeah. very forthcoming with I, with ideas. That's always an advantage when you, I think, when you got a producer. I, I thought you were first right referring, referring mm -hmm. to are we like yeah. actually eyeing a producer, because we've no, been no, down no. that well, road we've been he just, he, it's always great to have that fresh set of experienced exactly. ears. Yeah. 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 It comes from completely different genres, even. Yeah, yeah. But true. he appreciates, and you know, he did the clutch, a couple of clutch records. Mm -hmm. And Wino. And, and, and yeah. Wino and stuff. And so he understands, he, he knows heavy music and records heavy music, but it. He's also he's, so chill that it's not like it doesn't sound like he's a guy trying to enjoy to work his with foot. Yeah. He's, right. not, he's not, he's not yeah. trying to come across like the sixth member. You know what you guys yeah. should do? It's more like, mm. hey, what do you think of this? I'm just hearing yeah. a harmony in my he's head. Not Bob like, Rock. Yeah, yeah. Bob and Bob he, also, he also really appreciates <laughs> just like when we were working on some of the 
figuring out base codes. I'm not here. So you never saw the I never saw the show. He's also very adept at helping you capture what you're hearing in your head too. Mm-hmm. And yeah. helping you figure that out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he just gets great tones in yeah. the yeah. awesome studio. It was Mm-hmm. It was shocking to go back there when Steve kind of was the last one in, mm-hmm. and uh, for for the songs that we have, and uh, coming back and just the little bits of color and stuff yes. that you guys came up with, and, and that it was like, oh, man, you know, I, I felt I, I said to them I was like, it's like the band I'm in suddenly is being covered by the most badass creative musicians or something like it wasn't that I thought it was bad I thought they were really good and then I walk in and I'm like holy Uh, you you get used to hearing your scratch tracks and your unmixed stuff and then all of a sudden when it's done you're like holy shit we're pretty okay What's what next on the horizon with the band? What have y'all got going on for the rest of the remainder of the I know we're I'm quitting. quitting. We're, quitting. <laughs> okay. yeah. so we're going to be able to search for our fifth singer. Yeah. 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 Someone's going to spontaneously combust. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, fellas, I'll leave it up with an open forum and I wrap it up. Anything you all would like to close with or say, this is your opportunity. Uh, it's great to be here at Doom Festival yes. once yes. again, yes. sir. Yes. 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 See you again, man. Thank you, Mark. It's a pleasure to meet great you. Great to meet you. Todd, as always. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, people should plan on sticking sticking around. Yes. yes. Listen we got, we got to lot, Serpents lot to of Secrecy. Yeah, there you go. Serpents of Secrecy. The album's coming on Salt of the Earth Records. My guest, Serpents of Secrecy. Check them out if you get a chance live. I appreciate it. Thank you. Ed. Thank you. Thank you. Reverend Jim Morris.